In today's video, I want to talk with you about garden recycling. How can you use recycling in your garden? If you know anything about uh, my channel, it's all about do it yourself. It's about using what you have. It's about having fun and it's about growing. And today I want to look at how can we use what we have on hand in the garden which means recycling a lot of things. You know, I don't know if you're like me, but you, you might not wanna spend a whole lot of money on your garden. This is a hobby for me. It's something that I do for fun. And so it's not something that I, I mean, I do spend money on my garden, definitely, but I don't want to spend all of my money on it. It's something that I'm doing for fun on the side. I got a lot of other expenses. I've got three kids, I've got a wife, I've got a house to maintain, and you know, we got a lot of things going on. So I can't spend all of my money on my garden. So I try to reuse as many things as I can to get the job done in my garden. And so today I'm gonna to show you some things that I do, and maybe these are some things that might help give you some ideas for how you can use recycling in your garden. So first of all, let's start with some containers. You've got to have, if you're going to grow uh, flowers or vegetables, you need to have something to put it in. You need something, you can grow in the ground, but that's not always feasible for different people. Here at my house, we have some pretty bad soil. It's very, it's just full of clay not a lot of organic material in it. It's not the greatest, most fertile soil. And so we do a lot of gardening using containers. And in order to do that, uh, you know, we could go out to a big box store, we could order online containers to put all of our stuff in. But why do that when we have, uh, there are containers all over the place that can be used that are free and they're also interesting and they're cool. My wife's grandmother had a whole shed full of interesting things that can be used for the garden. Now, these were things that were not really worth any money or anything that was going to be sold or it's just things that had to be, we really just had to get rid of them. And so, you know, for instance, this little, toolbox that was probably built i don't know 20 30 40 years ago but it doesn't really serve the purpose of being a good toolbox today but fill that up with some good potting soil and you have a wonderful interesting creative place to plant some flowers and you could plant other things in it too you could plant herbs you could put strawberries in it. There's all kinds of ways that you can use that. And guess what? That's something that's so unique. You're not going to buy that in, you know, at your lo local hardware store. That paint, that's original paint that's peeling off of there. So isn't that interesting? And this is another example. This little pan that, that she had in her tool shed. Um, it's made out of a just a kind of a ceramic coated metal. And what a wonderful, interesting thing that could be used to plant some flowers in. Now, it doesn't have any holes to drain water, so I just simply took a drill and drilled some quarter inch holes in the bottom of it to allow the water to drain out of it. But, the, uh, you know, the possibilities are just endless when you think of all of those kinds of things. There's another kind of pot Here's an old pail 
that we found that we put to use drill some holes in the bottom plant some flowers now it's january right now so you know there's not a lot of flowers popping out but let me tell you when summertime gets here and springtime gets here and those flowers start popping out that's just going to be beautiful now i want you to see notice the difference between these two pots and and that that toolbox pot over there compare those to this boring pot that you could get get at you know a nursery or a hardware store just you know that's it does the job and it looks good i guess but it just has no character compared to these items that were recycled things that would have just been thrown away discarded or just stuck in a storage room somewhere to take up space we put them to use in the garden you know maybe those containers they're not big enough to do the kind of gardening you want to do if you want to grow a whole bed of vegetables maybe you want to switch to a raised bed well using pallets you can build your own raised bed now pallets are available you can buy them you can find places that will sell them to you but a lot of times you can get them for free i have been able to get all of my pallets for free uh, sometimes it's from things that were delivered to the church but i went online to facebook marketplace and i found someone that was giving them them away and you could get as many as you want and i went and picked up a whole truckload full of pallets and uh used them for all kinds of things and one of the things one of the ways i use them to recycle in my garden is by building my own raised bed so here is an example of a raised bed that i was that i built very simply very easily very cheaply and it is about four feet wide by 10 or 11 feet long. And it's the perfect size to really grow uh, good things. And it's about 12 inches deep. So I can grow carrots, I could grow potatoes, I could grow watermelon, I can grow beets, cabbage, broccoli, whatever in this bed. Last week, I published a video about how to Put a fence around your raised bed and I'll post a link in this video so you can see how to do that because that is a, a great way to protect your garden bed from things like chickens or rabbits or or anything that might get in there to kind of mess it up um, but other than that all of this was free perhaps you have some buckets laying around left over from a project those also can be a great way to recycle. Um, now these <laughs> sugar snap peas, you can tell they kind of got uh, burned up by uh, some pretty cold weather we've been having here. But you can grow tomatoes, cabbage, peas, black-eyed peas, all kinds of things you can grow in buckets. So if you've got extra buckets laying around, that's one great way that you can recycle in your garden now also you need to be careful with that think about what was in that bucket if it was some kind of chemical that was might be poisonous maybe that's not the best thing to grow vegetables in but you could certainly grow flowers in it but if you had something in that bucket that was non-toxic then no problem at all growing growing um, vegetables in those buckets I grew potatoes in these five gallon buckets last year, and that was wonderful, very fruitful, very worked very well. Each bucket yielded over a pound, about a pound to three pounds of potatoes per bucket. So you can certainly grow. But if you would like something larger, a larger kind of container, you could think about recycling uh, some kind of an old plastic bin this was perfect i grew sweet potatoes inside this bin and they just truly thrived in that and the cool thing about using a bucket or a plastic bin like this it makes harvesting potatoes and sweet potatoes a really a snap because all you do when it's ready to harvest 
you just tip that thing over, pour all the dirt out onto a tarp, and you can just sort through it, and it's so easy, so easy, much easier than digging potatoes out of the ground. Do you have uh, like a 55 gallon barrel or something like that? Those are available a lot of times. You can get them for 10 or $15, or you may have them for free. And if they were, uh, and, and they're great, you can, you can cut them into thirds and use them to fill with dirt, and they make an excellent way to grow tomatoes. That's just the perfect size for growing tomatoes. You, you can put a tomato cage on it to protect them and to give them some support, and it's just the perfect size. Or maybe you don't have a 55-gallon drum, but you've got an old trash can. Down here, we'll see an example of a trash can I cut in half and on one side this was the bottom of the trash can and you can fill that up with dirt and it works great for tomatoes you can grow potatoes in it or sweet potatoes in it and you can use the other side of the trash can as well you can use the top end as well and just use the ground as the bottom and the the and it's basically just a ring that holds the dirt together how many of you have seen tires all over the side of the road? Such a, a terrible thing to see a rubber tire off of a car on the side of the road. Those also can be used to make containers to hold dirt. And inside that dirt, you can grow flowers, you can grow vegetables, and they make a great, great way to grow in your garden. And it's taking something that would have ended up in a landfill and it's putting it to a practical use and it is free. We know you may be thinking, look, I don't want to make my yard look all trashy. I don't want to annoy my neighbors by putting a bunch of trash in my yard just so I can say that I'm doing some recycling or that I'm trying to save some money. But you know what it, what it really comes down to is using some creativity. A lot of the things that I'm showing you, they're just the raw building materials. And a lot of it comes down to how do you use the creativity that God gave you to make something that may look like trash in one instance, but turning it into something that looks beautiful and creative in another instance. So you have to kind of use your creativity and use your mind to come up with the solutions. And you know, I could give you some ideas on that, but my situation is gonna be different than your situation. I live out in the country. I don't have any HOA uh, you know, regulations or anything like that. So I have a lot more freedom in what I do. Plus, the way I use things in my backyard where nobody can see it might be different from the way I use them in my front yard while people are driving past my house every day and where my neighbor next door can see it. So you have to take all those kinds of things in consideration and just think outside the box on how you might you can use something. Now one resource that we have a lot of here at my house is look at all of these trees around my yard. My, my home is surrounded by trees and so we have limbs that are falling on the ground constantly we have trees that fall down in the woods or that we might have to cut down down here on the ground you see there's a limb that's on the ground so we're constantly having to deal with those kinds of things how can we use that resource though and put it to good use because the thing is you can take all of that stuff and we can take it to the landfill and you know we don't get any use out of it and and maybe it causes problems for the environment but there's ways even to recycle these natural things i want to show you something so we have this path that we follow around our house so we come out the front door and we have to walk through the grass and because it's a path that's constantly traveled it wears down the grass and it also gets muddy so we thought about putting in a sidewalk, or we thought about putting in some concrete pavers, but we had a tree that was available. And so I simply took a chainsaw and I made 
my own stepping stones. These are made out of a piece of walnut wood and it was absolutely free. The only cost was <laughs> the cost of the gas to fill the chainsaw to cut the little circles out. So isn't that an interesting thing? It's just such a, a natural look to it and it kind of just gives this beautiful pathway and it's very functional, very sturdy. You walk upon those paving stones or wood circles and it works really good. Now these won't last as long as a concrete paver, but so what? Once they rot, I'll replace them with something else. That's just an example. But what are we gonna do with all of these limbs that fall in our yard? You can recycle those and use them in the garden too. So this year I bought a wood chipper. Now you can go out and you can spend 500 to a thousand dollars on a wood chipper to chip up all of your wood. I didn't really want to spend that much money. So I went out and took a gamble and spent closer to $100 on an electric wood chipper. And from that, I was able to chip up all of my limbs that fall in my yard. You see this light colored mulch here? That is all made up of limbs that fell out of my yard. Put them through the chipper and it worked just fine. I'll leave a link in this video to uh, a video that I made showing you how I use that chipper from Sunjo to chip up all of these. Now, if you don't have a chipper, you can take your limbs to a recycle center and they will chip them up for you. This darker pile, that came from um, our local recycle center. And so I simply use my truck or you can use a trailer and you can go down there and get that stuff in my area you can get that stuff for free and it works really good at uh, as a mulch in your garden in your flower beds you can use it to make paths where you're constantly walking and you're having trouble with mud over time those wood chips will also break down and turn into a rich fertile mulch that you can put in your garden to grow flowers or vegetables another way that i use those wood chip mulch in my garden is with my chickens. Now, not everybody has chickens, and I understand that. But if you do, here is a wonderful way that you can recycle limbs into wood chips and mulch and use them in your chicken coop. So in my chicken run, uh, you know, you, you need to put something down on the ground to sort of absorb their waste and keep it clean inside there. And so I just put wood chips down. Now, I used to go to the local feed store and I would buy wood shavings and put them in there, but that was an expense. Now I can get those that same effect with this wood chips. I can do it for free. I used to get it from our local recycle center but now I can even make my own wood chips and I put those down in the chicken run. And here's the extra, extra cool thing about this. Once this wood, once these wood chips, you know, occasionally I'll need to go in and clean them out and put in fresh chips. So maybe once or twice a year, I'll go in and clean that out. But now that has turned into a rich, nitrogen rich, fertilizer because the chickens are fertilizing machines and so I can put that around in my garden and help my plants grow and it is amazing what that does in your garden. Now if you're like me and you have a lot of wooded area around your house or if you have a lot of tree limbs or little small saplings or things like that you might be constantly trying to figure out how you can, you know, what are you going to do with all of that yard trash? You know, you can recycle that too. You can make wood chips out of it, but you can also use those as a form of trellising so that plants that need to climb have something to climb up. 
things like cucumbers, tomatoes, field peas, green beans, any kind of pole growing vegetable um, that needs a trellis. How could you use your creativity to build a scaffolding or a trellis for your vegetables? And this is a project that I'm gonna try this year. Last year I grew a lot of vegetables <coughs> in hay bales. And this year I had this idea to build this scaffolding. It looks kind of like a teepee, doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And so I'm gonna be working on growing peas on my teepee. <laughs> so I'm gonna call it a teepee. And that'll be an interesting project that I have that recycles um, limbs and small trees from my yard and uh, gives me something to grow my vegetables on. And won't it be cool to actually be able to go inside my teepee and in the shade, I'll be able to pick all of the green beans and different things that are growing from inside. Isn't that cool? I think it's going to be a fun project and I invite you to follow me along uh, as we get into the growing season and the warmer weather and see how does this teepee turn out. But maybe that gives you an idea of something that you could do in your garden this growing season. Recycling limbs and other pieces of, of wood to use to build a trellis for your vegetables. Now, another way you can think about recycling is think about water. You know, uh, of course you're getting water from the sky, but we have to supplement our garden with water, especially in the summertime when it gets really hot. Uh, it just doesn't rain enough to give your plants the inch to two inches of water that it needs a week. So I, of course, end up using a water hose to water my garden to supplement. That can cause uh, your water bill to go up significantly as my wife shared with me this past growing season. All of the watering we did made our water bill go up. And, and the water that you get from the city, does, it doesn't make your, it's not as healthy for your plants as the water you get from the sky. But you know, every time it rains, water lands on our roof and it comes down and it goes through the gutters and it comes down through the downspout and it goes out into the ground and it just runs off and it doesn't get used for anything. And that can actually cause problems for the environment as too as it filters through the soil and picks up chemicals and things that are in the lawn. And so one of my things that I thought about is how can I capture that rain? How can I store it? And how can I use that free water, that healthier water, to water my garden? And so I figured out another recycling plan. I found a couple of these old IBC totes. Each one of these squares holds 275 gallons of water. And I was able to find these. Sometimes you can get them for free uh, or you can pay a, a nominal cost for them to buy them from someone and reuse them. I was able to get both of these totes for less than $100, including the, the supplies that I needed uh, for running the pipes. Now uh, this system, Right now is empty because it's cold and I don't want the water to freeze and to cause damage to the system. But as soon as it warms up and we get past our last frost date, I'm gonna be using this system. I tested it out at the end of summer last year and there was enough water in these two totes that I didn't have to water my garden with city water for I think it was two and a half months. So these two squares combined together gives me 550 gallons of water. And since I'm catching that water from my roof through the gutter system that's already there, it catches in the gutter system, comes down 
the downspout and goes into the water tower and that water there can be recycled and used in my garden it's healthier for my plants than the water we get from the city utilities it's free and it's keeping the water from just flowing off and going to waste so that's another way that you can recycle the garden is sort of a natural environment isn't it it's something where we are interacting with nature with animals and if we learn to interact with nature well we can actually help nature and nature can help us one of the ways that we do that in the garden is with birds birds are one of god's beautiful creations they're colorful they're interesting and they sing beautiful songs as well and they also eat insects and pests from your garden and help keep those insect pressure down off of your plants now some people have trouble with birds because you know maybe the birds are doing damage to their garden well we help our birds and they help us one of the ways we help them is with our bird feeders and maybe the reason why our birds don't uh, eat our vegetables that much is because we're always constantly giving them uh, this wonderful bird feed that helps them in the winter time it's especially helpful because they have a hard time finding natural food and so our bird feeders really help supplement their diet but another way that we recycle in the garden is if you've got old lumber or wood you can build habitats for your birds such as this bird feeder is made from some simple a simple design and some scrap wood and this gives birds a place to know in our yard in our garden they're welcome and they come in and they live here and they help us they do very little damage they do a lot more good than they do damage now here's another idea for your garden how many of you have ever seen an old trampoline laying around in your yard maybe when you were your kids were younger you had a trampoline but now they're grown up and that thing's just out there in the yard rotting or maybe you've got some old fence post metal fence post or some piping material or something like that did you know that you can recycle those too not only do those pipes and poles offer all kinds of structural opportunities they can make them something artistic as well such as this wind chime set so think about that how much have you spent on wind chimes and decorations for your garden you can make some of that stuff yourself uh, these wind chimes sound better than the ones that you can than most of the ones that you can get from uh, Walmart or Lowe's or things like that they're all tuned into a, a specific musical notes that I wanted them to be there's all kinds of information available online to help you know what size to cut your pipes in order to make uh, something beautiful like that and uh, so I was able to do that and to recycle some old pipes that I had and I had so much fun with it I even took some of the extra and made some gifts for different friends that I have and it's such a wonderful way to recycle something that would otherwise just be trash or just be thrown away now I've got one more project that I want to show you now this is a pretty big recycling project and I I'm, I understand this is probably not a project for just the average everyday person but I'm going to show it to you anyway because there might be some of you out there that have some mechanical abilities or know someone who is mechanical you know maybe maybe you're not a mechanic but maybe you're married to one and they're not interested in your gardening hobby but this might be a way for you to connect or maybe this is just something that would give you an idea for what you how far you can go with recycling uh, I'm gonna show you one of the biggest tools 
I have in my garden that is so useful and I use it all the time, every week. And it all comes from, well, not all, but probably 80 or 90% from recycled materials. It's my farm truck, which I call dry bones. Several years ago, I had an old blue truck that I used to, you know, to haul lumber or to take the trash to the recycle center. And it broke down and I had to put it in the shop to get it fixed. But I still needed a truck to do my chores. So I went out and I found the cheapest truck I could find. And it was this old Ford F-350. Didn't have a bed on it, but it ran. And so I bought it and I just went to work on it. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I just started using scrap material that I had on hand so that it would be useful. And so this entire bed on the back of this truck was built from scrap material that I had on hand. We had redone our uh, balcony on the back of our house several years ago. And when we took the old balcony down, I just set the wood aside in a pile to save in case I ever needed it for something. And so I had that when I got this truck and uh, I simply repurposed it and built this bed. I had a couple of old tin roofing panels and used that for the side walls of the bed. And I just built this bed on the back of here. My idea was I would just have the truck until I got my other one out of the shop. But by the time I got my other truck out of the shop, I had fallen in love with this project so much. It was so cool to me that I decided to sell my other truck and keep this one, which is older and rougher. I look at this, some people would look at it and they'd say, you know, that is the ugliest truck I've ever seen. But it is, it is kind of ugly, but the ugliness of it is also what makes it cool. This old rusty patina on this truck, you know what? You can't recreate that. If I was to take this to a shop and say, hey, I want you to paint my truck, they can't paint it like that. that was, that's almost impossible to recreate, recreate. This is a 1978 body. That means it took, you know, it took over, almost, it took 40 years to make that color and that design as God and nature did their work. You can't recreate that. It is absolutely unique. No one else has a vehicle exactly like this. Now, why do I call this truck dry bones? Well, that's a great question. I call it dry bones because it reminds me of the story from Ezekiel chapter 37. In that story, the prophet was out in a field and he was very sad and depressed because his nation had been conquered by a foreign empire and they had been forced into servitude to that empire and their military had been defeated and as a matter of fact out in the field he saw this valley filled with dry bones it was the bones of the defeated army from his country they were just out there in the field rotting and as he was looking at those bones and as he was thinking about the terrible situation of his people God spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and he said, Son of man, can these bones live again? 
<laughs> and of course, Ezekiel, he says, well, God, you alone know the answer to that question. And so God told Ezekiel, he said, I want you to prophesy to these dry bones. And when he did, all of a sudden, their bones began to rattle and they began to come back to life and they stood up upon their feet and the bones reconnected to each other and flesh began to come back onto the bones. And then God said, I want you to prophesy to the bones so that breath will come back into them. And, and breath came back into the bones and the bodies until they became a living army. And all this was a vision that Ezekiel was having. And God said to him, I know right now, your situation seems beyond hope. And all that you can see is death and destruction. But I am still God. And I am still on my throne. And I am still in control. And I am going to bring a resurrection that you can't understand right now. But one day, it will all make sense. And so whenever I started working on this truck, hey, small cat, when I started working on this truck, it just reminded me of that story. Because this old truck, it used to be a dump truck. And uh, it lived a hard life. When I got it, it was just caked with mud. It had been used in really hard work for its entire life. And uh, you know, the question was, can this truck come back to life? Can it live again? Can it be useful? Or is it just finished? And I, this old truck, my recycling project, it's something that is coming back to life. And like I said, I use it every day. And you know what? People see this and they either love it or they hate it. <laughs> they say, that's the ugliest truck. But a lot of people, they see it and they just kind of, they understand. Maybe at first they look at it and say, I don't understand. That's just so ugly. But then it kind of comes to them. And they start to see the beauty in it, how creative it is, and how interesting it is. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of what your recycling ideas are. You have to be able to look beyond what you see on the surface and what do you see underneath it. Now, this truck... People all, every time I take it out and I go to the gas station, I get so many comments from people. They just love that truck. They think it's the coolest thing. Oh, that is awesome. I love what you've done with that truck. Um, I went to the, <laughs> I took my trash the other day and the guy came up to me and he says, dude, I just want you to know you get the coolest truck of the day award. That is the coolest truck I have ever seen. And, um, but it came from something that was broken down and worn out and you know that's really what God does for us you see when we are broken down when we are scarred by things that have hurt us in life um, God can take all of that and he can resurrect it and he can make you something new he can take your broken life and he can make it whole again and he can give you a new purpose. And what formerly the scars and the things that were the things that made you broken, God can take those things and he can turn them into something incredibly beautiful. And the the very scars and the things that brought hurt to your life and 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 broke you down and wore you out, they can be the very things that make you cool. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about what God does for us. This sign on the back, this cross, is just a beautiful symbol of that. You see, we are so used to seeing crosses in our day and age. People wear them, you know, gold crosses on a necklace. And we forget that what this cross originally was. You realize that? Think about that. 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire made these crosses as a way to torture criminals and to take their life from them, to execute them. It was the most painful, cruelest way to execute someone. And that's how they crucified Jesus. 
But God used that to save the world because of Christ's death on the cross we can be forgiven of our sins. His death atones for our sin. His death pays the price for our sin so that we don't have to die because He did it for us. And so 2,000 years later, this symbol, which was such a harsh, evil, painful symbol, it has become for us something that is beautiful. So beautiful that we wear it as a necklace or we decorate our churches with it. And everybody who sees the cross today sees it as a symbol of hope, not as a symbol of execution and torture. And so we, we, um, God can do that for your life as well. Just as he did it, he is doing it for this truck. This truck, which it was so worn out and broken down and rusted out. But now, with a little love and a little creativity, it becomes something that is really, really cool. Because you see, God sees our brokenness. He sees our hurt and our pain and our failures. He sees the death that is overtaking us. But because of what His Son Christ did for us on the cross, He can change it. He can redeem it. And, and so He can save us so that we can say this verse. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. And so we can, we can allow God to redeem us and to save us our life and to take what is broken and worn out and turn it into something amazing. And so we can join with Ezekiel. And when God says, son of man, can these bones live? We can say, well, you, O oh Lord God, you are the one that knows if it's going to happen. It can only happen by your hand. But I'm here to tell you folks, God redeemed me. He saved me. And I'm not perfect. I've got a lot of little scars. I've got a lot of problems I'm still working on. But the, even the scars and the brokenness in my life, because it's in God's hands, He can turn it into something cool. And God can do that in your life as well. But you just have to give yourself to Him. You have to give Him your life. You have to give Him your brokenness. Put it all in His hands and let Him do it. So this isn't a, a tutorial on how to recycle things in your yard. But I hope that this video kind of gives you some ideas of the possibilities You've got to use your own creativity. You've got to think about your own situation. What do you have? How could you use it? How could you even be creative and artistic to make it something that's interesting and beautiful and expresses who you are while also being something that's helpful in your garden? Well, you've got to decide that. Pray about it. Think about it. Brainstorm. Get creative. And get out there and grow and be fruitful. Say goodbye, small cat. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to become a thumbbug.